everyone, it's Chelsea from Hiproc TF Studio, and today I'm sharing with you the sped up version of the live stream that we have every Thursday morning on the Art Joy of Sharing live stream channel. And today it was watercolor fun, so we were doing projects with watercolors. So at the beginning of the show, we were talking about all the different things that we had gathered up. We were talking about brushes, and I was showing these new Arteza water tank brushes. These are the ones that come in a set of six with three flats and three pointy. And um, then also my other brushes that were that are sitting there, like my Zen brushes from Royal Lagnickel and my um, brushes from Eurict. Um, just talking about good thirsty brushes, talking about all the materials that we got out to try. And then I was talking about the hot press watercolor paper that I was using, which I taped down. Um, this is a five and a half by eight and a half piece that I've taped onto a piece of acrylic to keep it flat because I'm planning on making a card front for a big card. So I start out with my um, Sakura Koi watercolor travel set and this is a really good option if you're looking for a reasonably priced watercolor set that has a good pigment load um, you can actually get the bigger one that's got I think 36 or 24 colors in it for somewhere around 15 to 17 dollars right now on Amazon and I will put the link in the description box below as well as the link to the Arteza site where you can buy these water brushes um, I decided to try them out first. Uh, they were really easy to fill because they don't have a little suction thing that you have to suction up the water. You can just pour the water right into it. And then that big red button in the middle was an excellent way to let water out. I've had some problems with my other ones lately, and I don't know if it's because they're clogged or if it's because they just, they're hard. I have to squeeze them really hard to get any water out. And I want in a water tank brush, I want the water to be flowing, not super fast so that it makes everything too wet, but enough so that the bristles stay wet. So I started, um, I started out making a sky wash with the big flat brush at the top, and then now I'm doing what I call watercolor sketching. I didn't make a pencil sketch for this. I'm actually drawing what I want on my composition with the watercolor in a very, very light color. So it's kind of a, um, there's a little bit of khaki and a little bit of ochre color there that's been very watered down. And I'm using the finest tip water brush, water tank brush um, from this Arteza set to just basically draw. It's like I'm drawing with a pen, but I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to glaze over the top with some more layers. That's what I've learned about watercolor is that this is a good technique is to have a have a light color and then glaze over the top with another darker color and another darker color just like you do with mixed media you put layer on layer on layer until you're happy with the result uh, watercolor is the same um, it is the thing that frustrates me is that you do need to wait and let things dry and you know if you've been watching my channel that I am super impatient. I don't like to wait to, <laughs> to let things dry and um, often when I do a watercolor composition I use frisket or uh, masking fluid to keep things white and you really cannot use your heat tool on masking, masking fluid because it makes it bond to the paper because it's basically like rubber cement. It's just a rubbery stuff that seals the paper where you want it to remain white and so um, the waiting process is what frustrates me, but at this point in the video, see I've, I've trimmed this video out because some parts were Peg and some parts were me. If you guys go over to the Art Joy of Sharing live stream channel, you can watch the entire live show and see what we were talking about and what we were doing and what Peg was doing, but this is just my portion of it. So you're going to get, you're going to go back and forth between um, sections, but at this point I'm starting my second layer of glazing. So I'm either using the same color, only less diluted. That's the thing about watercolors is when you put a lot of water in them, the color becomes lighter, and when you have less water, the color becomes more intense. So I have now switched to my uh, number 12 Uric watercolor brush. That's U-R-E-C-H-T, and I'll put a link to where I purchased them down below as well. Um, these are really nice 
a synthetic sable brush that holds a lot of water. So I'm just trying out different things. I am still using my Koi Sakura watercolor set. I didn't really use much else, but I did use some watercolor pencils and a little bit of that um, Gamzee Tambai watercolor that you see at the top of the screen. I used a little bit of that at some point. It's more of a gouache to me than it is a watercolor. It's not very transparent. It's quite opaque. Uh, watercolor in its general form is very, very transparent. So as you're glazing the colors on the top of the dry layer, you're getting another transparent layer and another transparent layer. And you can start adding in some fun colors, like maybe some pink or some turquoise or some orange. Um, on top of your green layers and you get an effect as if the sun is shining on that cactus. By the way, these are cactuses if you guys didn't notice. Um, I'm making a get well soon card for a friend of ours who's in the hospital. He had a massive heart attack. He's only 42 years old. So, um, you know, he needs a nice card. So this card will end up being a full eight and a half by 11 folded over sheet so the finished card will be five and a half by eight and a half and that will have enough room on the inside for all the people from the soccer team to sign their names and um, include any gift cards or or anything that they want to to um, we're kind of having a little you know collection of of things for him because he had the heart attack while he was on the soccer field so that is what this end product is going to be when you see it at the end in the pictures. Um, and I'm just continuing to glaze. Uh, a couple tips that I have for you is that you, as your watercolor painting, you use two buckets of water, one with clean water and one with the water that you're rinsing your brush in. You see, I rinse my brush a lot, a lot. And so, um, you know, if you keep rinsing, you just keep getting your water dirtier and dirtier. So if you keep a wet, a, a one that's for dirty water to rinse your brush and then one that's got clean water in it, it's much more easy to start adding back in clean water. Um, I didn't do any real fancy techniques on this. It was mostly just the glazing. Um, I did do some pencil effects at the end and I did sprinkle a little bit of um, 91 percent alcohol at the top and made kind of like a little splatter effect at the very beginning. The alcohol pushes the pigment away and makes kind of like spots. Um, you can also do that with salt. There is a lot of watercolor techniques and this is so basic in comparison to what you can find on YouTube and what I could teach you in a different class. Um, I'm not by any means a watercolor expert however so don't don't uh, think that I am. <laughs> also, I'm using uh, a little bit of paper towel, it's a shop towel, to, to dot and lift sometimes when I think the color has gotten a little bit too dark and I don't want to put more water to, to uh, make it even wetter and more thin, I just kind of will blot a little bit. So that's another thing. Um, Peg suggested that a good thing to use is a tissue like a Kleenex. Um, instead of the paper towel, but I didn't have any Kleenex on me. I've heard that before and I just didn't think of it. So I was just using my paper towel and keeping, keeping hold of that in my left hand and then um, using my right hand to color. So I'm back to the Arteza water brush pens again. I, I really like these. I'm happy that I purchased them. Um, I'll put a link below and it was, it's going to be an affiliate link because they gave me an affiliate link. So um, that means that if you use my link to go to Arteza and purchase these water brushes, that I will get a few cents. So I'll just warn you ahead of time that that's the case. They're constantly having sales and things, and, and uh, I recommend these. I like them. So I've got all different kinds of crazy colors in my cactuses. Some, you know, we have all kinds of cactuses where I live. Those ones that have the red tops and the kind of green leaves. Oh, this is where I was talking about the differences of water brushes. <laughs> I recognize me <laughs> taking them all out and showing. Um, that's an Ocotillo, and that's, you know, my, my I'm Paper Ocotillo Studio here. 
um, and in all my other social media, a lot of my other social media. So uh, that's what my studio is is named for. It's a strange plant that has these woody uh, stalks that go straight up with no branches coming off of them. They're just like the branches go directly from the ground up to the, you know, as high as they'll go about 10 or 12 feet in some cases. And then they have these leaves, these waxy leaves all up and down them, but nothing branches off like a tree. And then when they bloom, like now, at the top, they're, uh, the leaves turn red and you have a red conical shaped bloom at the top. So I drew those. I drew some saguaro, some organ pipe cactus, some uh, prickly pears, some barrel cactus, all different types of cactus. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please give it a thumbs up if you have and subscribe if you haven't already. If you know someone who likes cactuses, share this video with them and maybe pin it on Pinterest. So that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>